Hey there, and welcome to part three of the freestyle tutorial where I'll mostly be covering the um, edge commutators pretty much. So um, how to learn them, how they work, how to finger trick them, all that stuff. And also just maybe some example solves at the end, um, just to put everything together pretty much. So um, let's get right into it. So edge commutators look kind of similarly to corner commutators. So um, this is an example for the case BF. So um, as you probably saw, uh, in this case you start off with the interchange, uh, insertion, and just undo both pretty much. And here we have the case for TF, and this involves just a setup to the case we had before. So yeah, those cases, uh, I think you can work out pretty quickly if you're already familiar with how corner commutators work because um, it's pretty straightforward on edges too. So I guess the one key difference in edge commutators versus the corner commutators is that there's this uh, type of commutator in edges called the four mover, which is well, what the name suggests. Um, and it's made out of uh, a 180 degree face turn and a slice move and it's pretty damn fast so you'll see a lot of um well a couple of four movers but a lot of setups to these four movers because they're like so damn fast and i guess versatile so i guess an intuitive way to look at it is that um you look for the piece that needs to travel the furthest so in case this one needs to go all the way down here um and you just find a way to move it to here using one of those two move types so if we do the 180 degree face turn um, yeah, just be like that. And of course, in order to include uh, this other unsolved piece in, we do uh, this here. And of course, just undo them both. Um, the other option is to, I guess, do the slice move first, in which case we need to do the 180 degree face turn here in order to include that um, piece where we haven't really included yet. But of course the first one's faster, so that's what I use. So yeah, here's another case. So I'm in here. Um, this needs to travel the furthest to here. So a way we can do this is just do um, the 180 degree face turn. Um, and of course this is a piece we haven't really included yet, so we'll do that and just undo them both. And yep, yeah, here's an example of an actual case in the list, which is CN. Um, and that's just an F prime setup to what we just saw before. And here's a bit more of a longer and maybe a little more confusing case, which is for EO. Um, this is an R prime F R setup to this case. Um, so pretty much just moving the buffer over here and these stay stationary. Um, and here, I mean like, I guess sort of another way you can think of it is just kind of think of it like this. And if you've memorized like the directions of this case, you can figure it out pretty quickly based on that. Like it's just the case for AU. Um, but once again, you do the furthest piece thing as well. So here you can do this. But yeah, um, the intuitive way of I guess, figuring it out takes like a while, so I recommend using like the association method. So get really comfortable with like memorizing like the direction of some of these simple cases, and um, I think this work from there. Like if you see something like this on the side, and you can kind of just rotate and just recognize the letters. So, um, yeah, just a lot of I guess associating um, comms with past comms and all that, um, which will help you um, get the hang of learning the um, setups to the form this faster. So I thought I'd bring up like another um, cool case that sets up to a four mover, which is like literally a U-perm. So um, if you know the MU U-perm, um, you might know this out, but um, I guess here's how it works. So um, here you can do an M2 U setup to this case. Um, so this is AW. Um, and yeah, the way you can do this is, well, this needs to travel the furthest. So do M to bring it to where the adjacent edge was. Um, then U2 and undo that. So that's just kind of what you do here. I'll just undo it from the beginning. So M2U to that case. So MU2M 
Oh, here you can do um, U2, but you can kind of just cancel out the end and just do U instead. And M2. So I guess for edge commutators, the uh, the main uh, new thing tricks that you have to learn are the E and S slices. Um, so for E moves, uh, for single moves, I just use middle to do uh, uh, pulling and pushing for these types of moves. And you can kind of hold, you kind of squish the uh, top and bottom together, kind of like a hamburger, and you're like flicking the patty. That's how I like to think of it, which is kind of weird. Sometimes you end up like that as well. And yeah, um, for U2, you kind of do it just like a... Oh, E2, sorry. You kind of do it like a U2, so kind of like that. Once again, with either the hamburger or inverted hamburger holds. So that's what you need to know for E slices. And for S slices, um, for like the uh, single moves, you kind of just do um, index, kind of like that. Um, I guess I'm, if you look at it like that, it's kind of like a hamburger hold as well. I guess there's also cases like this where you kind of do like a uh, middle finger as well. Maybe some other stuff. I just like the M moves. It's mostly just ring and just ring back for uh, M, M prime and M. Uh, M2, I usually do this with both hands and that should serve you fine pretty much um, I think the rest of the stuff like you know the F moves and R moves are you probably already learned some corners so now I'm just going to go over how to learn edges so um, for corners I recommend that you use the UFR parity algs as like a placeholder because you had to learn them anyway so it just kind of made sense for edges you don't have such things obviously so for edges I recommend learning the Orozco method um, which I'll just go to right now. So the prerequisite to using the Orozco method is to know all the Q algs and the inverses, as well as the um, AQ um, edge flip alg. So this is a case for JH, and in order to solve this case, you just need to use two Q algs and put both of the Qs in the middle. So in this case, you can do JQ, and then QH. So here's another example with BL. So you just do BQ and QL. If you get a letter pair with Q in it, then obviously you just do the QL for it, or the inverse. And if you get a case that involves A, so like FA for instance, um, you just do it as normal, so FQ. And QA, or AQ, you can just kind of think of as the um, the edge flip, the opposite edge flip out. So yeah, I just recommend using that as a placeholder. And uh, yeah, in terms of learning uh, these algs themselves. I guess it's pretty similar to what you saw from the corners. Like the main difference is just mirror um, stuff that you probably see a lot. Um, it just essentially means mirror the alg left to right or right to left. It's kind of like the relationship of the lefty T perm to the righty T perm. Um, same deal. Um, I'm just going to show the example here for QB. So yeah, if you know QD, then it's just kind of like the same thing, but on the right hand side. Um, I think if you play around with like um, some of the algs here. I deliberately put like some of the simpler algs to learn at the top. Um, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. Um, also, since the last um, part, I also added in edge flip algs, um, which are fairly. It just pretty much is algs. Um, a lot of them you can set up to like this one and other things. And I did the same thing for corners, so there are now corner twist algs, so just learn them along with the corners and learn the edge flip algs along with the edges. Um, also, I have another video going more in depth on corner twists. Edge um, flips are a bit more straightforward, so I didn't do that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is here. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through two example solves. Uh, I'm just going to breeze through these kind of quickly, at least for the memo, um, and I'll focus more on the execution. Um, I guess in terms of like, I guess how I'm explaining these comms and solve, like you shouldn't really think too much about like how the comm works. Like you wanna sort of sort that out kind of outside of the solve because like in an actual solve, you wanna spend a lot of time focusing on advancing your fingerhead to um, match the, um, I guess, insane speed over the freestyle comms versus what you used before. But I'll explain how they work in the solve anyway. Um, so getting into this, EV. 
E, B, and that's the buffer piece. So all this break here, or no, U face sticker, D, S, W, I, and that's where we broke in the cycle. Um, there's also a twist there with a UD sticker facing that way. Um, I think I like to do is that um, if there's a load layer at the end and a corner twist, um, I like to uh, make a pair out of them, um, of that and the UD sticker of the corner twist, so um, IG in this case. And I used to like make an image out of this and think of it as being bright pink, so maybe a bright pink igloo or something. So yeah, anyway, um, we have parity, so remember it might be a bit different for edges um, later on, so now D, P, A, T, O, X. So this is actually the sticker for B now because of the metal swap we did because of parity. B, S. And this is new buffer piece, so that's where we stop. Um, now we've got to start a new cycle to finish the rest. So I'll start here at K. So K, L. RU uh, goes back here and finishes everything. So I'm executing it now. So DP is just a pure commutator. AT. OX is just another pure commutator. BS is just a setup like this. KL, this is pretty simple and RU, which is another like three move another setup to like a four mover which are fairly common. So now we have E V uh, B D uh, S W And uh, for like something like this, I like to just break into the corner twist. So in this case, um, I'll do the comfort IG. And U. Okay, so going over example solve number two now. So starting off PR. I O X, that's a buffer piece, and there's a corner twist here with a UD sticker pointing that way. We can do the same thing as before, so the X Q making that an image, bright pink, or whatever you want. Um, but anyway, we have parity, so um, this is no longer the buffer, but actually the sticker for B now, so B J. And this is the actual buffer piece now, so I'll just break into a new cycle like here. D U. O, T, D, um, so I need to cycle down here, H, X, H, and we have two flipped edges here. So um, starting off, what I, what I do is that um, if there's two flipped edges outside the buffer, um, you can just like rotate or just set up to um, one of the UF um, flip cases. So in this case, I do it like that. Um, and do the case for this. Um, for um, cases where you have like two flips outside of the buffer, um, you can do it at the beginning, very beginning of the solve, which is what I like to do. Um, for like a single flip, which involves the buffer, whatever's in the buffer piece, um, you can't really do that till the end of the solve because otherwise you kind of screw up your um, first pair and like everything else pretty much. Yeah, anyway, going on, so BJ, it's just that nine mover, and DC. O T, so this is one we've set up to this. And D H and X H, which is U Y L to four mover. And yeah, um since we have parity, like we have these two swapped, so at the very end they'll swap back. Uh, moving on, so P R. I O and X 
We'll do X cube, just breaking into the corner twists here. And this is a J perm for B. I just side note about this um, last bit. Um, I mean, like, I guess you could do like a parody out for X and then the corner twist. Um, but generally, I find that um, just doing a commutator and a parody alg instead um, is just faster, like pretty much all the time. So I always do that. So yeah, that concludes my freestyle tutorial. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave some questions or comments below um, if you want to know more about the stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to create a time efficient route for someone to get into the competitive end of the free by free blindfold events. Um, Cause I mean like going the intuitive route of just coming up with comps and flying stuff like it would have worked totally fine in 2015 but um, in 2019 I don't think it's like competitively viable anymore cause the speed optimized comps are like so damn weird nowadays and stuff you probably wouldn't be able to come up with on the fly. Um, I don't think they're necessarily hard to learn though, um, I just think you have to kind of come up with them like in advance which is why I recommend learning from a list of algs. But of course like a lot of the alg lists um, can be a bit confusing to look at and stuff so I wanted to create something that was like I guess simple minimalistic um, and just kind of gets to the points um, so you have like a really sort of starting block for um, your I guess free blind journey while also putting you in a spot that's very much competitively viable and yeah if you spend like an hour a day um, just loading and revising these algs um, I believe in a month's time you'll pretty much have freestyle um, in your head um, so yeah, uh, that's it. Um, see ya.